Psalms chapter 134 and 1. Behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary, and bless the Lord, the Lord that made heaven and earth. Bless ye at Zion. That's right. So we give our praises to the Most High and the Son, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father, of the one true God, the Most High God of Israel, by Hashem. That's how you say in the name of Yahweh Shai is the true name of who many know as Jesus Christ today, but his true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shai. So that's how you say their true names in the Paleo Hebrew, which is the ancient Hebrew, which is known as the Lashua Kodash, the Holy Tongue, right? And we also give a Shalom, meaning peace, unto the 12 tribes of Israel, which today are the so-called Black, Hispanics, and Native Americans, right? To y'all that be scattered, uh, those, of course, of the elect, we say Shalom. You know, so we're going to really get into this, um, you know, this topic, which is going to be uh, touching on Yahweh Shai, right? Uh, Old Testament prophecy talking about Yahweh Shai, you know? So the Lord is prophesied all throughout the Old Testament, right? And it's prophesied what he's going to do, why, what's his purpose, right? What, what, what is even the purpose for a Messiah? I've done a video before, like, what's, what's even the purpose for a Messiah? What, what's the purpose for a Savior? Why do we even need a Savior, you know? And what is the Savior going to come do? The Old Testament lays that out plain upon tables of what this, you know, what Yahweh Shai came to really do, right? So we're going to start off with the book of Isaiah chapter 11, you know? Um, if you want to go to read it. Isaiah chapter 11, you can start at 1. Alright. Gone. Isaiah 11 and 1. And there shall come forth the rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his root. And the spirit of the Lord, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and slaki. Let me uh, restart that. Uh, verse 2. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Right, and um, and there too, it just said that they shall come up forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And we understand that that's not talking about King David, all right? Because we know King David, he is the son of Jesse, right? But that's not referring to King David, nor is it referring to King Solomon, right? This is a prophecy concerning Yahweh Shai, because of course Yahweh Shai himself, he also comes from the seed line of David, right? The Lord's not some, uh, he's not just a child straightly, strictly from the Holy Spirit. Nah, David, okay, the, it was prophesied that through the loins of David, the uh, there was a king that was going to come through his loins, right? Let's actually get that in the book of Second Samuel, right? So we know that really this is not talking about Solomon, neither is it talking about King David, because first and foremost... Uh, but we're going to get it. This is the book of Second Samuel, chapter seven, and one start at twelve. It says, "And when thy days be fulfilled, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers." You know, and it says, "And thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and I will set up the seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom." Right. And this is Nathan the prophet prophesying to David about he's going to have a, 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 a king or a Messiah, a savior, come through his loins. David was given this prophecy. It says, uh, 13, He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rods of men and with the stripes of the children of men. Right? So, this kingdom is not a kingdom that is only for a little while. The Nathan just told David, this king, he's going to have this kingdom established forever, man, right? There's going to be no ending to his kingdom, right? And that's already cutting King David because King David, his kingdom didn't rule forever, right? King David, it says uh, 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 that his his uh, tabernacle of David is in the ruins right now, man. It says in Amos that the, the tabernacle of David has to be rebuilt again, as in the days of old. So obviously that's not David. And then also, too, that's not Solomon, because Solomon's kingdom never got established forever. 
I, King Solomon, first and foremost, he didn't live forever. He died in, I believe, 931 B.C. And the temple that he built was destroyed in 587 B.C. by the Babylonians. So this is this is not a prophecy concerning King Solomon. This is a prophecy concerning Yahweh Shai. All right? As a matter of fact, I want to get that in the book of... Uh, let me actually get this real quick, right? Uh, Zechariah 6 and 12. I'm going to read uh, yeah, you can get Zechariah 6 and 12. You know? Zechariah. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay. Zechariah 6 and 12. And speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is a branch, and he shall grow up out of his place. And he shall build the temple of the Lord. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord. And he shall bear the glory. And shall sit and rule upon his throne. And he shall be a priest upon his throne. And the council of peace shall be between them both. Con. Con. So this is concerning Yahweh Shai, right? He <laughs> says the man whose name is the branch, right? Yahweh Shai is also known as the branch, you see? So this man, he's going to build the temple, Right? He's going to build the real temple that's going to last forever, right? Because when Yahweh gets on the scene, he's going to actually establish his kingdom forever and ever. It says it's not going to be, there's not going to be no ending to the kingdom of the Lord, right? It's an everlasting kingdom of rulership that shall uh, go forever, right? Um, I believe that was in the book of Isaiah, okay? Chapter uh, 9, and I'm going to get 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of his increase of his government and peace, there shall be no ending. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment, with justice, henceforth forever and ever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Right, so the child that was born is the child of Yahweh God. Right, when he was born, okay, uh, with Mary. Right? He was born to Mary and Joseph because, again, Yahweh Shah wasn't just a, 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 ba a child who was born of the Holy Spirit alone. Although he he had the Holy Spirit from his birth, just like John had the Holy Spirit from his birth, but we understand that he actually had a physical, biological father. And if you actually go back to, uh, what's his name? Joseph, right? Jo if you go back to Joseph's uh, uh, genealogy, you read the book of Matthew, right? The book of Matthew tells you all the way from Abraham, okay, and it goes all the way to Yahweh Shai, because Yahweh Shai stems from the seed of Abraham, then you go to the seed, of, then you go to Jesse, right, then you go to David, right, and then from there, you can go uh, to verses like 16, and then it says, Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, whom was born Yahweh Shai, who was called Hamashiach. So the genealogy of Yahweh Shai is in the book of Matthew in the very beginning of the New Testament. That's why Matthew 1 and 1 says, the book of the generation of Yahweh Shai, the son of David, the son of Abraham. See? So Yahweh Shai is the son of David. Right? And if you go to verse 6, it says, and Jesse begat David, the king, and King David begat Solomon and her that had been the wife of Uriah. So, okay, you find Jesse within the genealogy of Yahweh Shai. You see, so when you go back to the, uh, Isaiah chapter 11, and it goes to 1, when it says, And there shall come forth a forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. We know that's really talking about Yahweh Shah. It's not talking about David, nor it's talking about King Solomon. Uh, you can go back to, uh, read again, verse 2. All right, going back. This is Isaiah 2 and 11 and 2. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, Spirit of wisdom and the spirit so like it, understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And shall make him of a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall might smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Right, so and who's that? Who's going to fulfill this? Right? 
Who's going to fulfill this prophecy? Yahweh Shai. Uh, I believe that's Revelation. Can I get that real quick in the book of Revelation, chapter 19? Right, 19 and 11. So it says that he's going to come, he's going to judge with righteousness, right? He's going to judge everybody. He's going to smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, right? Because Yahweh Shai, he's going to be coming with power. It says the Son of Man shall come with the clouds with great power, you see? So he's coming with his chariots, and he's going to come and judge this earth in righteousness, man. Anything that the Lord does, it will be done in righteousness, you see? Uh, get that real quick. 19 what? 19 and 11. 11. This is uh, Revelations 19 and 11. Mm -hmm. It says, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. Khan, His who, eyes. Who's this Khan talking about? John was having a vision of Yahweh Shai, right? Here you go. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. Mm -hmm. And he had the name written that no man knew but he himself. Khan. So, you know, it just says that the Lord, his eyes are like a flame of fire, which that, you know, links up with the description of the Lord. And on his head were many crowns. So, you know, Yahweh Shai, his ultimate goal is to come and uh, conquer the world man that's why it says in the book of psalms uh i believe it says i will make thy enemies sit here till i make thy enemies thy footstool so yahweh is going to come and judge these nations and then he's going to make them his footstool he's going to make every nation his subjects his servants you see it says uh verses 13 Did you read that real quick verse 13 and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the Word of God. God. So that's what the Lord is coming to do. He's going to have a vesture. It's going to be literally dipped in blood. Meaning he's going to be drenched when he comes back in blood. Everyone thinks that Yahweh Shai is coming back to be peaceable. They think Yahweh Shai is coming back to be a um, uh, 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 very, very happy dude. You see? A white boy on a white horse. They take that literal to think a white boy on a white horse is coming back, man to hug you and then tell you it's okay right no he's not going to tell you none of that he's actually how he's going to speak to you it's going to be through his mouth but we'll read on how it's going to be go to uh verses um 15 i had a precept for the uh dipped in blood Con. but i want to read this real quick uh and out of his mouth goes short goes forth a sharp sword and that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he as he treaded the winepress the fierceness of wrath of the Almighty God. See? So it says that he's going to, out of his mouth, right? He's not going to speak sweet words out of his mouth, but out of his, out of his mouth shall go a sharp sword. Meaning, I mean, fire. Literal fire. And not out of his literal mouth, but out of the chariots. Because it said that he's coming upon a white horse. The white horse just represents, okay, that chariot. Because white is righteousness, and horse represents power. See, so Yahweh is coming with great power. Right, and he's gonna judge, right? And he's gonna smite the nations. He's gonna first and foremost, he's gonna he's gonna smite Esau. Esau is the prophecy why the Lord's blood is gonna why the Lord's garment is gonna be drenched in blood so hard is because he's gonna be coming from the land of Basra, Edom, which is here in America, right? You got a precept? Kind of uh, dipped in blood first. This is Genesis chapter forty nine and start at Nine, Judah is a lion's whelp. For the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stood down, he couched as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? All right. It says the sepulcher, all right, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver between his feet, until Shiloh come, and until he shall be gathered, Salaki, and unto him shall be the gathering of the people be, binding his foe unto the vine, and his ass's coat, and the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. Good. And that's a prophecy of, uh, of Yahweh Shai, because it tells you that Shiloh, you know? So that's Yahweh Shai, the peaceable one. So, his garments, they're going to be in, in wine, in blood of grapes. I mean, they're going to be uh, red, you know, in blood. Come. Now, this is also a prophecy from Jacob. You know, in verse 1, it says, And Jacob called unto his sons, 
He said, gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. You see, so this is something that's going to happen. All right, the prophecy that's going to be filled, fulfilled in Yahweh Shai. Yeah. And I got another precept concerning how Yahweh Shai, he's going to be coming with his blood. His, his garment's going to be dyed in blood. You see, this is Isaiah 63 and 1. Who is this that coming from Edom with dyed garments from Basra that is glorious in his apparel? Traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the white fat? So Isaiah is asking the Lord, you know, in a vision, he's like, Why do you why are you coming from Edom? And it looks like you you know, you just you just was stomping a bunch of grapes, right? You were like in the wine press. Because again, the wine press, if you know what that is, you know, it's like you put grapes in there. And then you just stomp in the grapes, you know, right? And then all those grapes, if you're, you know, you got to wear, you didn't wear your nice clothes into a damn, uh, into a wine press. You wore, you know, beat up clothes and your garments at the end of the day, it'll be, it'll be kind of, you would have all type of like, uh, uh, juice all over you, man. You see? So that's what it looked like. The Lord had a bunch of just stains on his garments. Why? Because he's coming from the land. Eat them. This is what you wish I said. Verse three, I have trod in the wine press alone. And of the people, there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger, and I will trample them in my fury. And I, will and, I and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemer is come. So Yahweh Shai, he's going to be, he says, I trod in the winepress alone. And who's in this winepress, man? Esau. Esau is going to be mo mainly in this winepress, and Yahweh Shai is going to come and destroy it, right? And you're going to have the blood of the Edomites all over the garments of the Yahweh Shai. You see? That's why he says, I have a great slaughter in the, uh, I have a great sacrifice in the land of Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. Uh, roughly paraphrasing. I might have said that wrong. But that's Isaiah chapter 34. Because Yahweh Shai is going to come and deal with Esau. And Esau is getting that ultimate judgment, man. You see? You have a precept? No. Con, uh, matter of fact, let me get uh, Matthew 10 and 34 because... When we read this, a lot of people think that, you know, Yahweh Shah was supposed to come back peaceable, right? He was just supposed to come back all easy. Nice, it's going to be a nice and dandy deliverance for the Christians, right? For the saints of the Lord, everybody who just called in the name of Jesus Christ. And we all gonna, uh, we're all going to have a picnic when the Lord comes back, right? That's not what Yahweh Shah is coming to do on earth, man. He's coming to totally obliterate, commit genocide, kill. And this is something that people... We won't talk about but this is what the lord says he's going to do it's all throughout the scriptures you know uh get to that in isaiah chapter uh, 10 and 34 i mean matthew 10 and 34 uh, matthew 10 comment comment all right let me say matthew 10 and 34 mm -hmm. think not that i come to send peace on earth I came not to send peace, but a sword. Hey, the Lord says, "Think not, I come. Think not that I came to send peace." Yahweh Shai didn't come to send peace. He's not coming to bring peace. He's coming to bring a, a sword, man, to slay utterly old and young. You see, that's the truth about Yahweh Shai. You know, he is a mighty man of war. Yahweh Shai is coming back mighty, as as actually, uh, Wisdom of Solomon says that. Right? right this is the Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter eighteen. 18 and 15 it says that almighty word leaped down from heaven out of thy royal throne as a fierce man of war into the midst of the land of destruction so the almighty word of the most high leaped out of heaven who's the word of the lord we know the word of the lord is yahweh shai yahweh shai one of his many titles is the word of god you see right and i believe it says that in the book of uh if you go really just go back to revelation chapter 19 right it literally tells you that Yahweh Shai was known as, he was called like the Word of God, you know? Uh, yeah, this is going to be Isaiah 19 and 13. And he was clothed with the vesture dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. So Yahweh Shai, another title for him is the Word of God. Even John chapter 1 and 1, it literally says, um, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So Yahweh Shai is the word of God, you see? 
That's what that's one of his titles. Let's read that again. That almighty word leaped down from out of heaven, out of thy royal throne, as a fierce man of war into the midst of the land of destruction. See? So Yahushai, he's gonna come out the heavens. When the Yahweh when the Most High gives Yahweh the decree to come and deliver Israel and then to come and judge the nations, he's gonna leap out of his throne, man. Right? He's gonna be excited. He's gonna be ready for this thing, man. Right? He's gonna jump into it like a mighty man into this land of destruction, Babylon. Because when Yahweh uh when he really gets in the earth, it's not gonna be peaceable. The earth is gonna be in uproars, chaos. World War Three is gonna go be is, is literally gonna be going on, man. Hey, can I get that precept real quick? It says, um, I believe that this precept says, oh, I'll get it. Uh, you got a precept? What did you say? You got a precept? Uh, I'm looking through. Uh, yeah, I might be able to bring this one out. Let me see. Uh, I'm gonna look this up there. Where is Shalaki? Shalaki. It should be right here. I'll just read it. It says, Second Edris. All right, Second Ezra chapter 13 and 5. It says, And after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number for, from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the men that came out of the sea. But I beheld, and lo, he graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. But I would have seen the uh, region or place whereat the hill was graven and I could not. And after this I beheld and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid, and yet durst fight. And lo, he saw the violence of the multitude that came. He neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue a cast of sparks and tempests. Now this is a prophecy of Yahweh Shai, all right, in that day when he comes back, you know, he's gonna come back with his, with his chariots, and there's going to be literal tempests coming down and smiting the people on the earth, yeah. all right? Yeah, that, that's what that goes into. God, so Yahweh Shai is coming back <clears throat> to rage war, all right? And he said he's going to, let's read that again. Wisdom of Solomon 18 and 15. That almighty word leaped down out of heaven, out of that royal throne, as a fierce man of war into the land of destruction. Because when Yahweh Shai gets here, and I was bringing that out, that the land is already going to be in the midst of chaos. World War Three is going to be going on heavy. When Yahweh Shai comes back, it's going to be at the climax of World War Three. Right? In the Valley of Decision. In the battle, the Valley of Decision, which you read about in the book of Joel, you can get that. If you want to uh, but the book of Joel talks about how you know the Lord's gonna judge in the valley of Jehoshaphat and all the kings of the earth are gonna be gathered to this specific place it's called the valley of decision right how uh, the valley of Jehoshaphat and that's when all hell like the Lily Lily you're gonna have World War three it's gonna be at its very 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 uh, top peak moment you see that's why Yahweh Shai said in Luke chapter 12 and 49 he says, I come to send a fire on the earth. And what will I if it be already kindled? So Yahweh Shai says, he's coming to send a fire on earth. Right? He's coming to send destruction. But he says, what will I if it be already kindled? Meaning, what, what's really almost the point if everything's already, everything is already just hit the fan. Everything is just done. Right? You're going to have, the prophecy says that millions and millions of people are going to die by famine, die by the sword. Jacob's trouble. The fire is going to be kindled by the time Yahweh Shai gets here. But Yahweh Shai is going to be the last dude to kind of, uh, 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 kind of, he's going to be the one to kind of finish it, right? He's going to have, he's going to be the finisher, right? The finisher of it. Uh, you got the precept? This is Joel, chapter 3 and uh, 1. It says, For behold, in those days in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations. I will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my lands. Uh, so the Lord is coming back to um, 
avenge Israel. He's coming back to righteously, okay, give Israel back their kingdom. He's going to actually revenge them, man. You see, revenge them on the enemies, all these nations that had us in captivity, right? Uh, keep going on that real quick in the book. Of, uh, jump down to, let me get the bleed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's it? Well, uh, Joel, when it says he's going to have the valley decision. Yeah, okay, I got you. So here's um, verse. They all even be round about. Here's verse. Uh, I'll probably start at uh, probably 10, 11. 11? Uh, yeah, that's probably going to 11. 11. Mm -hmm. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen. Gather yourselves together round about thither. Cause I mighty wants to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be waked and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I judge to set the judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Come. The roar, the Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake, but the Lord will be the hope of his people, and the strength of the children of Israel. Come. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain, then shall Jerusalem be a holy, and there shall no more, no strangers pass through her any more. See? So you see how you see what Yahushua's coming to do? He's coming he's coming to lay this place flat. He's coming to judge it. On behalf of Israel, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I got this in Matthew real quick, Carl, before you get that. This is uh, Matthew 25 and 31 to show you that this is Yahweh shine in the valley of Jehoshaphat. Mm -hmm. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another mm -hmm. as a shepherd divided the sheep from the goats. Uh, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. All right. So yeah, the Lord, the Lord, he's gonna separate the different nations one from another, and he's going to do what he did in Joel. Uh, he's going to uh, set them flat. But also, let me get this in Pro, uh, Psalm chapter ninety-seven, just to show you that uh, Yahweh Shai, he's fulfilling prophecy by judging righteously, uh, as it says in Isaiah eleven. This is Psalm chapter 97, verse 1. The Lord reigneth, let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. A fire goeth before him and burneth up his enemies round about. And this is also a link up to Joel and Matthew. All right, Joel 3 and Matthew 25. How clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. So the throne that he's sitting on is going to be full of righteousness and full of judgment. Come righteous on. judgment. Mm -hmm. A fire goes before him and burneth up his enemies round about. So the goats that he separated, they're going to be burned because his enemies are going to be, the nations are going to be gathered round about. So they're going to be burned up. Alright? Yeah. I want to get that in Numbers chapter 24 and 17. It says, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob. A scepter shall rise out of Israel. It shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheth. And this is Yahweh Shai, you know. This is the prophet. Uh, this is a man. His name was Balaam. All right. Balaam, the son of Beor, which was, uh, he was, he was, he was almost, you could say, like a, a seer. You know, but he wasn't a prophet because he wasn't an Israelite. But the Lord kind of was giving this man, this man visions, right? And this is man saw. He said, I shall see him. He was saying, I shall see the Lord when he comes back, right? But not now. So this is referring to the second coming of Yahweh Shai, right? And it says that he's coming to smite the corners of Moab and destroy the children of Sesh, you know, Sheth. And Edom shall be a possession and Seir shall also be a possession. And Israel shall, for his enemies, and Israel shall do valiantly. Out of Jacob shall go, uh, shall come he that shall have dominion, and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. 
So Yahweh Shai, this is another precept in uh, the Old Testament that he's coming to destroy. It was always prophesied that in Yahweh Shai's second coming, he's coming to take all nations down and to establish his everlasting kingdom that shall go forever. You know, there's going to be no end to it. And all nations will be subject unto it. All right. Especially Esau, which the prophecy is that Esau, he's going to also be of it, but he's going to end up going extinct uh, at a moment. I mean, at a, at a point. So after a thousand years of slavery, Esau is going to be the only nation that's going to be extinct, extinct. All the rest of his nations, they're going to uh, they're going to go back to living how they were supposed to live. But they're going to still be like subjected under Israel. Right. They're going to still be like servants, you can say. So and they're going to be keeping the laws of the most high. See, so the day of the Lord, that's not something for you heathen to be trying to get all uh, trying to hasten. Right? You Edomites and all these people asking, when is the day of the Lord, man? You know, and when you, when is the Lord coming back? You don't ask that because when he comes back, that's it for you, man. You know, right? even the day of the Lord is going to be a, a very terrible day, to be honest. This is Amos. All right. Right, Yahweh Shah's return again is gonna be very, very like it's literally gonna be terrible, man. You see, this is the book of Amos. All right, we kind of go to it real quick. I go with it real quick. Amos chapter 8, and I want to get 11, or uh, Amos chapter 5 18. It reads to say, uh, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. What end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. See? So he said, Woe unto them that desire the day of the Lord. Alright, what is it? What is that? What is it to you? That's what he's asking. Like, what is it? What does that have to do with you, man? You know? Why do you desire that day? It's going to be darkness and it's not going to be light. As if a man did flee from the lion and a bear met him and went into a house and leaned his hand upon the wall and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? Even very dark and no brightness in it. So the day of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai is going to literally be like, you cannot escape. You see? You're not going to be able to escape that day, man. It says if you ran into a lion, but say that you got away from the lion, it says it's, like, it's going to be like you ran, you ran into a bear right after you got done with the lion. And then he says if you ran into a house, meaning you got away from the lion, I mean the bear also, and you was trying to lean your hand to actually get a breath, he says a serpent came down the wall and bit you and he's just making these analogies showing you like look there will be no escape and there will be no rest you see it's going to be terrible especially for the wicked you know you yeah, know this is God. ezekiel 30 and two, uh, 3 mm -hmm. for the day of the lord is near even the day of the lord is near mm -hmm. a cloudy day which shall be the time of the heathen yeah and this is going to be the time of the heathen all right because it tells you that in joel that the Lord is going to gather all nations round about him. Now, those are the other nations, those heathen, you know, because Joel tells you that he's going to gather his people out of captivity. And as for the other nations and the wicked of Israel, they're going to have to die, you know. They're going to have to be put to the sword, you know. That's a day of the heathen. God. All right. Yeah, I wanted to get this real quick. This is Revelations 11, and I want to get... um. Okay, 14. The second woe is the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe coming quickly. Meaning, the second world war, it had passed, but the third world war is going to come quick, you know. Now, verses uh, 15. The seventh angel sounded, and there were voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his anointed, and he shall reign forever and ever. You see. So after World War III and the Lord comes to do what this prophesied to do is to come and it's going to be a time of the heathen as he brought out the brother, man. All right, being the heathen, it's going to be their, their rulership. It's going to be up. He's coming to smite the, more, the corners of Moab, destroy the children of Seth. Edom's going to be a possession. Seir, all the enemies are going to become his footstool. You know, get that real quick. Uh, sit down till I make that enemies thy footstool. I think that's one of Psalms 110. But... Reading that again, and the seventh angel sounded, and there were voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Hamashiach, or it says Christ, but we know it's just it means Hamashiach or the anointed one. He shall reign forever and ever. So Yahweh is coming to 
uh, take everybody's kingdom and uh, make it to be, and ever make everybody to be in subjection. He's coming to make everybody to be the servants to Israel. That's why it says that uh, he had many crowns on his head, because he's coming to subdue many kings and make them to become his servant. You know, uh, get that real quick. It's the Psalm 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Yeah, so the Lord told Yahweh Shai, sit at the right hand of me until I make your enemies your footstool. All right, so Yahweh Shai, his, his ultimate purpose is to come and to destroy all the Israel, destroy all the wicked, all right, to, to bring calamity on earth, war and fire, and then to make these nations to become his slaves. You see, that's that's what Yahweh Shai is coming to do. He's not coming back peaceably. All right, he's not coming back for you heathen. Hey, when he comes back, that's when your ass is up, you know? Uh, we might as well go back to Isaiah 11 then. Keep reading on it. Isaiah 11. And let's see where. I think we're at 4. But with righteousness he shall Real judge. Love. Huh? Love. Verse 4. With righteousness he shall judge the poor and reprove with equity. For meek of the earth... And he shall smite the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked, and the righteous shall be the girdle of his loins, and the faithful the girdle of his reins. Mm -hmm. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie with the kid, the calf with the calf, and the young lion, and the fatling together, and he and the little child shall lean on lean them lead them and the cow and the bear shall feed their young one shall lie down together and the uh, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox and the suckling child shall play on the hole of asps and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cock on the cockatrice den then they shall not hurt nor they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. See, and so that right there is referring to the second wilderness, man. Right? You see, which there will be a second wilderness, which we can maybe try to get into that, but uh, there's going to be a second wilderness to the point to where you know, the Lord's going to bring us out of this land, and then we're going to actually uh, sojourn in Israel again. You see. So there's going to be a second well, a second exodus, just like there was a first exodus out of the land of Egypt. Well, this one is going to be out of the land of America. I believe it's Jeremiah 23 and 7, if you can get that real quick. You know, so the Lord himself, he says that the cow and the bear is going to feed, and the young one shall lie together, and the lion shall eat straw like an ox, right? And it's just pretty much showing you how the Lord is going to restore peace on earth, right? The Lord is going to actually... Restore everything to its natural a sta uh, uh, habitat, its natural estate. Your ch children, like little child sucklings, are going to be able to play with poisonous snakes, right? Because Yahweh, Yahweh Shai is going to actually uh, reinforce that righteous spirit on the earth, man. And you're not going to have, you know, Esau, you're not going to have this demon, this devil ruling, okay, and putting out wickedness all over the earth, man. That's why everything is out of course, everything is out of whack. Because we have the wrong people ruling it, man. You see? But Yahweh Shai, he's going to come to reestablish peace on earth. He's going to make a covenant again. I believe there's that covenant. He says he's going to make a covenant with the beasts of the field. And they're going to be at peace with us. You see? Uh, I want to get this in the book of uh, Isaiah 2. And I want to actually get 2. It says, And it shall come to pass that in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above all hills. And all nations shall flow into it. You know, just confirming how all nations are going to serve the Lord in that day. And many people shall go and say, Come, yea, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. See? So Yahweh Shai, he's going to actually have these heathens serve him. And they're going to go up to the temple. Always year by year, they're gonna keep the feasts. They're gonna keep the Passover. They're gonna keep the. Uh, they're gonna keep the the laws. You see, and they're gonna learn from us. We're gonna to have to teach the nations, right, how to do everything they need to do. 
because they're not going to be uh, uh, they're not going to be uh, uh, living like heathen. They're going to actually have to be living like us, although they won't be us. But they're going to have to live like us because they're going to be our servants, our subjects. So Moabites, they're not going to be able to have their weird ass uh, diet, man. Because Moabites, Chinese will eat anything. You look at it, they eat, they eat, they have, they eat, they'll eat mouse as a delicacy, octopuses, you know. I mean, eel, eel, camel's humps. Okay, they'll eat, uh, they'll eat a starfish. Anything you could think about, these nations, they'll consume it. They don't, they don't live by the laws, man. Esau is not going to be popping a dog, man. He's not going to be having sex with animals, man. You're not going to have anything, you're not going to have anything out here out of whack. These nations are going to have to be in order, right? Or else they will be put to death. That's why it says Isaiah 60, for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee, yea, they shall utterly be wasted, right? So they're going to be utterly wasted if we find out that these nations are breaking the commandments, you see? So they're going to have to walk in our ways, right? Which is going to be a good thing, you know? It's going to be a good thing. It's going to be way more better than walking according to the way that Esau set the world up in wickedness, right? Everyone is going according to the the, the philosophies and the why that Esau has on earth, right? Everybody is walking according to do what thou wilt spirit, which is satanic. It it only it only uh, uh it only lets people be wicked to their fullest extent, and that just has the world continually be in in a in mourning state. We're in it's in a mourning state because the world is ran by wicked people. But the Most High is going to put this world back in righteousness. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their plow, and they shall beat their plowshares, they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall li not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And the house of Jacob, and the house of Jacob say, Come and let us walk in the light of the Lord. See, so there's going to be no more war. There's going to be no more, okay, uh, there's going to be no more need for war when Yahweh Shai is king. Because Yahweh Shai is the peaceable one, right? That's how I say until Shiloh come in the book of Genesis 49. It talks about when Shiloh comes, right? Shiloh means the peaceable one. Yahweh Shai is the peaceable one. So Yahweh Shai will come to set peace over all the earth, right? And to destroy the wicked. Right? And these other nations, they're going to be living real, they're going to be living good because they're going to have, we're going to save the nations, right? The nations will be saved through us. Because if Esau continually had it his way, everybody would go stink at a point, man. Every, they would kill off their population. Okay? Esau wants to lower the population. You know, Esau wants to put drugs, I mean not drugs, he wants to pollute the air. Okay? He wants to uh, damage your mind, you see? That's why you have all type of diseases and autism and stuff around every nation out here man it's because we got this wicked man Esau who has this nation in his hands everything is everything you can think about man is out of whack okay everything is out of whack the more the, the fishes in the the sea the the uh the birds they are all wailing man they're all they're all going through some type of pain because Esau continually destroys this earth you see but the Lord's going to have to come back and reestablish everything in righteousness. That's why if we go back to Isaiah chapter 11, when it talks about, uh, you can read that again. Isaiah 11 and, you know, start where it says, um, peace, uh, the word peace is. Yeah, you can probably start at six. All right, verse six. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together. And the little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like an ox. And the sucking child shall play on the hole as And the weaned child shall put his hand on the cock trice. Then they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. The earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord. As the waters cover the sea. And in the day there shall be a root of Jesse. Which shall stand for an ensign of the people, to it shall the Gentiles seek. God, and I want to kind of deal with how it says the knowledge of the Lord shall be from uh, from shall cover the earth like the sea. See, because this whole world is going to be full with the knowledge of Yahweh by Shem Yahushua. We told you that the Gentiles also they are going to have to keep the laws and commandments. You see, and I want to get this in Hosea two and eighteen. It says, it says. Um, 
uh, verses Isaiah 2 and 16. And it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Aishi, and shalt no more call me Balai, uh, Bala, uh, Bali, because we're going to call Yahweh Shai Aishi, which if you look into that word, it means husband, right? We're no longer going to call him Balai, which means uh, pretty much like the Lord, you know? We're not going to call him like Lord, but we're going to call him our husband, right? You see? Because Yahweh Shai is going to make that, uh, that covenant with his elect. For I will take away the names of Balaam out of her mouth, and they shall no more remember, they shall no more be remembered by their name. And in that day I will make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field, with the fowls of the air, and with the creeping things of the ground. I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth, and I will make them to lie down in safety. So Yahweh Ba Shem Shai is going to actually make a covenant with the beasts of the field. That's why we're going to be able to play with your most dangerous animals that are out here today, man. Your lions, right? Uh, 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 a rhino or whatever, man. You can, you're going to be able to play with um, an alligator, snakes, and they're not going to attack you because the Lord is going to actually establish that peace again, as we brought out. And he says there's no more going to be battle on the earth, war. We're not, going to, we're not going to learn the knowledge of war no more, man. So the knowledge of the Lord is going to be covering the whole entire earth forever and ever. Just think of that, man. That's very, very, very beautiful, right? Every You're going to have the real righteous rulers back on earth, right? We're going to be actually ruling this earth how it should be ruled, man. We're not going to have Esau's concrete jungle cities out here polluting the earth, man. We're, we're not going to break down, uh, uh, we're not going to break down uh, natural life. We're going to build it up, man. And we're going to understand truly what it means. Okay, we're going to understand truly how to use the earth. We're going to have knowledge of everything. King Solomon had knowledge about a lot of different things. We're going to have knowledge about everything, man. Everything's going to go back to like the Garden of Eden. What's that preset? That, that it's going to blossom like the Garden of Eden again? I believe, um, I remember that preset. I think it was in Ezekiel. Let me try to see if I can get that. Yeah, I want to get this. Uh, this is the book of uh, Ezekiel chapter uh, okay, 36 and 33. It says, Thus saith the Lord in that day, right, I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, and I will also cause you to dwell in the cities, and the waste cities shall be builded, and the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it was it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. And they shall say, This land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden, and the waste and desolates desolate are ruined and ruined cities are become fenced and inhabited then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I am the Lord that builded up the ruined places and plant that which was desolate I Yahweh have spoken it and will do it see so the Mosiah says that this place that was desolate because he's going to come back to lay this place flat but it's going to become like the garden of Eden man. just beautiful man right Everything, the air is going to be uh, actually breathable. It's going to be clean air. Okay? You're going to actually have your, your whole body is going to be a spiritual body. You're going to be able to experience different type of feelings, you know? Different type of uh, uh, emotions. You're going to actually be able to see the beauty of the actual uh, of the mountains, you know? The sunset. You're going to see how really beautiful the sun is going to be when it's at its full strength, you see? All right, the different smells you're gonna smell. You're gonna actually smell the trees. You're gonna smell the the flowers. Everything's gonna be back to its like uh, potency, because right now everything's lost its youth. The Lord said the world has waxed old. It's lost its youth. You know, everything. I'm pretty sure the colors are gonna be so much more vibrant. You know, everything is just gonna be like beautiful. You ever have that? You ever have like the nostalgia feeling or that feeling of euphoria? Mm -hmm. You know, well, you're gonna have that feeling. All the 24-7 You got that euphoric feeling You're going to always feel like Everything's just so beautiful you can't, You're can't. you not going to be able to get enough of it Your fruits are going to go back to being How they should be You see Like probably your plums are going to be juicy as hell You know Your grapes are going to actually be big like a damn basketball You know Everything man I mean okay, uh, uh, People are going to be beautiful Israel is going to be just a, like gloriously beautiful, man. That's why the Lord says, I'm going to make you an eternal excellency. Everyone's going to look at us like, this is such the most beautiful people on earth. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be looked at like a nigga. They're not going to be looked at like a damn spick. You know? 
like a nobody, you're going to be looked at as a straight God on earth, right? You're going to have power to do all things, man. You know, look, I, hey, the Lord says, eyes have not seen, nor have ears heard what the Lord have prepared for them that love him. So we can go on, man, you know? We can go on and on about what the Lord is going to do and how it's going to be beautiful. And you can think days on end for, like, how beautiful things can be. But there's just certain things which we just don't even know how to comprehend yet. You see? That's how beautiful it's going to be, like the Garden of Eden. You know, none of us really understand what that is. You see? We grew up in a damn uh, desert. Esau, this, this land is like a desert, man, compared to what's going to be in uh, the Garden of Eden, man, you know? Yeah, please, sir. Con, uh, give me a second here. It says, uh, Alright, so this is um, You know what, I, I just lost it Let me just go to this precept Isaiah 51 and 3 It says, For the Lord shall comfort Zion He will comfort all her waste places And he will make her wilderness like Eden And her desert like the garden of the Lord mm -hmm. Joy and gladness shall be found therein Thanksgiving in the voice of melody yeah, so we finna, we're gonna have a really beautiful place, man. It's gonna be a really beautiful place because it just told you that right now we are like um, a desert, you know, like a wilderness, like a waste place, a dry land. And ultimately, that's how America's finna be. You know, America's finna be laid flat. It's gonna be uh, completely waste, you know, from the ICBM nuclear missiles. But the Lord, throughout all the earth, Right, uh, mainly in uh, in the Garden of Eden. All right, where that's gonna be in Jerusalem, it's gonna be it's gonna be raised up. You know, it's gonna be a really nice place. You know, it's gonna be beautiful. It tells you in Tobit, uh, thirteen and sixteen. All right, and in uh, and in Revelations twenty one, that this place is going to have uh, many beautiful rocks, man. Correct. That's a beautiful thing to look at. Yeah, yeah. It tells you that the kingdom of heaven is gonna be built up with precious stones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like our roads, our houses, the kingdom is going to be built with precious stones. Okay? It tells you in Revelation, like literally what it's made of. Mm -hmm. Who's the Revelation 21? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That, that. And that's a whole combination of beautiful uh, uh, nature. You know, uh -huh. things that are natural. You have rocks and then you have the trees, man. That's all beautiful, you know, through uh -huh. the spirit going on. This yeah. is Revelation 21 and. Uh, uh, one, it says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, and for the first heaven was passed away, and there was no more sea. I, John saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming uh, down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. All right, I'm going to go to verses 11. It says, having, having the glory of God, her light was like, the, like unto a stone of, the, stone of most precious, even like a jasper stone. And clear as crystal, right? And to be honest, this the whole kingdom is gonna be made with, made with uh, precious stones, man. You see, beautiful stones that we haven't really seen before. Gold, any type of preciousness is gonna be in the kingdom. You see, nothing is gonna be just bland. We're not gonna have wood. You mm -hmm. know, we're not gonna have tin. You know, we're not gonna have uh, concrete. That's Esau's damn kingdom, man. No, we're gonna make everything with the. The finest material, right? Everything's gonna be with the most expensive, okay, things. Okay, the most, uh, 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 the, the things that are really, to be honest, the most valued stones, the most valued anything. Yeah. Things that actually have real value is what we're gonna use. That bull crap. Right. That's, no, that's for the slaves, really, to be honest. Mm. We're gonna have everything preciously built, stone right. and everything, right? right? Our stuff isn't gonna be common. You know, it's gonna be really nice and rare. Right. This is Tobit. 13 and 16 for Jerusalem shall be built up with sapphire and emeralds and precious stone yeah. the walls and the towers and the battlements with pure gold and the streets of Jerusalem shall be paved with beryl mm -hmm. and the carbuckle and stones of Ophir and that's, that goes to gold and all her streets shall say I'll uh, I think hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they shall praise him, saying, Blessed be God, which hath exalted it forever. So, Khan, those are a lot of beautiful stones you just named. God. You know, if you just imagine that, that's like really 
that's really nice, man. You cool. know, like all the colors together, all flamboyant, boyant, like you said, vibrant, cool. and just get a feel, especially with the way that the temple and everything is gonna really be built, right? Cool. We're gonna have the best architectures to actually build this up. Well, we won't say, you know, it's gonna be the other nations really to build it up for us, but we're gonna make sure they build it right, you know, because right. we're gonna be the people who put out the blueprint, you know. Right. I want to get but, this. This is the book of I. You got more. Uh, I just want to read this one too. I mean, unless that's uh. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isaiah sixty and thirteen. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee. The fir tree, the pine tree, the box tree, to beautify the place of my sanctuary. I will make the place of my feet glorious. So Lord's gonna make sure that everything mm. is just glorious mm. in the kingdom of the Most High. I want to get verses uh, seventeen. For brass, I will bring gold. For iron, I will bring silver. And for wood, brass. And for stones, iron. I will make that an exactor's peace and thine officer's righteous. You see? So Yahweh Shai said that everything that uh, uh, everything is going to be one step above. If there's something that is probably should be used for brass, you're going to make it with gold. If it's something that, you know, it should be probably silver, or well, we're going to make it with, uh, uh, or stone, we're going to make it with silver. You see? So your things today that's like a door, you probably just need a wood door, you know? Like people be like, all right, just, just get a wooden door. Oh, no, we're going to have a golden door, man. Mm -hmm. Right? Your your uh, your pens, you know? Or, or things you write with, your utensils. He's like, just just get a wooden pencil. And Esau mm -hmm. will give you a little mm -hmm. wooden, you know, your little wooden pencil mm -hmm. that, you know, your sharpener and stuff mm -hmm. like that, that you put into a sharpener that, you know, that type of stuff is going to be done. We're going to have to have silver gold. We're going to have silver utensils. Mm -hmm. Right? Our eating, the things we eat with, our plates, our cups are going to be gold. Right? Diamond. Our tables are going to be probably precious stone, gold, and silver. Right? Mm -hmm. Nothing out there is going to be, uh, we're not going to be having no type of uh, uh, generic material of anything, man. You see? Mm. That is just beautiful. I'm going to read this. Second Edris, chapter 43. I mean, Second Nature 6 and 43. For as thy word went forth, the work was made. Per was made. For immediately there was a great and innumerable fruit, and many and diverse pleasures for the taste, and flowers and unchangeable color, and odors and wonderful smell. And this was done the third day. And, and that goes uh, a little bit into Second Nature, right? Being in the third day. Second Nature uh, expounds on that. And that's like the that was the beginning, you know, when the world was being made. Now we've waxed old into a into a time where Esau is a rule, the earth is being destroyed, the fruits aren't the same, the trees don't look the same. So at this time, the Lord he gave some very very good adjectives, you know, about how this is gonna be. Even you read in um uh, uh Syrac, the twenty fourth chapter, Yahweh Shai being a tree. It's a very beautiful tree, man, with many colors, you know? Uh -huh. And that's how it's going to be, man. You know, even even the flowers are going to smell really good. And that's going to all be in the kingdom. You know, it's all going to be at its youth. You know, it's going to be a youthful time. Very beautiful, you know? Uh -huh. Things that are youthful are, are like, at its prime, you know? Uh -huh. At its very best estate, you know? So these things are going to be very beautiful. It says uh, innumerable fruit. So we're going to have many fruit, you know? And it says, and many and diverse pleasures, many and diverse pleasures of taste. So there's going to be all types of taste, man. Cool. You probably can't get those same tastes that you get here, right? You, there's probably like some crazy, I'm talking about crazy, man. Even our taste buds. It's all messed up. Yeah, it's, it's done waxed old, yeah, messed up. Yeah, our taste buds today, like Esau, especially the things he makes you eat, mm -hmm. like sugary stuff and soda. You just, mm -hmm. you grow up on eating like nasty food mm -hmm. you grow up mm -hmm. eating gmo mm -hmm. modified food your 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 tongue and your 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 senses it kind of dims away and yeah. you become used to that kind of food yeah it's just like now when you eat real food it's like you know you don't have a taste for it mm -hmm. you don't really like it well to be honest in the kingdom we're going to get our original taste buds back mm -hmm. and everything we're going to eat is really going to be natural nothing we're going to eat is going to be processed mm -hmm. you know you're not going to have any type of uh steroided food Everything's gonna be natural, okay? It's gonna be it's gonna be good for you, but it's gonna taste ten times, hundred times better than anything you can eat here. What about that pizza? I mean, you people will be like, it might taste good, but nah. To be honest, 
that stuff is trash. Like, yeah. everything you hear is, like, straight trash. Mm -hmm. You Real food is, like, real livestock. And mm -hmm. I mean, cooked at its oh, best. Oh, man. I mean, like, and They're talking about the Solomon sacrifice. Yeah, you know? Solomon's sacrifice. The, the, yeah. the feast, the seven-day yeah, feast. Yeah, we're going to have actually food for mm -hmm. We're gonna actually eat herbs. We're gonna actually mm -hmm. eat the uh, fruits. That's mm -hmm. gonna be the sweets and stuff like that. It's gonna be good to us. Right. It's gonna. We're not gonna have it. We're not gonna have a. Uh, we're not gonna be like all higher. We always need sugar, sugar, sugar. Right. Right. You only need sugar because sugar is a damn drug. Mm -hmm. Drug. Sugar is actually it tells you that it's more. Uh, it's more addictive than cocaine. That white substance that you eat sugar, that processed sugar, that's nothing but a drug. If you saw got you all drugged out. To the point to where you just want cake and ice cream. Whoa. No, that first and foremost de detrimentally damage your mind. We're not going to have anything that damages our temple. Everything's going to be pure. It's going to be beautiful. Everything's going to taste good. You're not going to be freaking gluttonous and fat. No obesity. We're just going to eat, and it's going to be okay. We're going to be satisfied. Everything's going to be back to normal, bro. Hey, and that's why when you go back to Psalms, Psalms chapter, uh, if I can go to it, 93, 97. It says, The Lord reigneth, let the earth rejoice, let the multitude of isles be glad thereof. So in the Lord, he's finally reigning. I mean, what she, you know, the most high is always, you know, omnipotent. But what I'm saying, when the Lord, he has like reign over the earth full of righteousness, then the people are going to be glad, you know. And to an extent, the heathen, when they go back to their lands, they too are going to be happy, man. God. They're going to be happy that Esau... Oh, you can't. They're not going to be mad, you know. They're not going to be depressed, all right. They're really not because the Lord's reigning, you know. God. This is the happy time to be in, you know. Esau, the devil, the destroyer of the earth. No one wants that, man, God. you know. You oh, yeah. Proverbs 29 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, mm -hmm. but when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn, you know. So, when the righteous are in authority, the people will rejoice. Everything is going to be. There's going to be no reason to mourn. I mean, we're not going to have an unjust king. We're not going to have a wicked king mm -hmm. ruling over us. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a king that judges the righteousness. Right? A fair king. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful at that. I mean, mm -hmm. Yahweh is going to be very fair looking too. Mm -hmm. You don't think Yahweh is not going to come on this earth and be some ugly dude? Right. right. Now, Yahweh <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's going to be like, you know, he's going to actually be, uh, people are going to be comely. And people are going to actually love. It's going to be like a damn prince, you know? Everything is going to be like just beautiful, man. Mm -hmm. And people are going to love it, right? We're not going to have Esau, like the brothers brought out. We're not going to have a demon, a damn devil, damn bamboozling us for no reason. You see? Mm -hmm. Everything's going to go back to righteousness, man. Right, you know, too, these other nations, they're going to love it, man. You know, to be honest with you, Iran, they already have restrictions down there. You know, but Esau, ultimately, he has to die. He's not going to want righteousness. That's a man of confusion. He's not going to want things put straight. He hates straight, man. The Lord tells you, uh, paraphrasing, what the Lord made crooked, who can make it straight? Esau was crooked. He can't be. He can't be made straight, and he doesn't want to be straight. So, he he. That's not. That's not for him. You know, he is an abomination, and he made this place the abomination of the earth. So, ultimately, it's not. That's gonna be hell for him. I, I don't know why, but you know, Esau he's gonna have to be done done away with. God, but um, Esau is the wicked. Mm -hmm. Anytime you hear about the wicked, mm -hmm. it's talking about Esau. I want right. to be precept. Isaiah yeah. twenty six and ten. Let favor be shown to the wicked, yet he shall not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness he will deal unjustly and mm -hmm. will not behold the majesty of the Lord. So even Esau in the kingdom, he's gonna be done trying to deal unrighteously, man. He's still going to be trying to do wickedness. He's not going to be able to learn the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. Because Esau is the border of wickedness, man. The people against whom the Lord had alienation forever. So these wicked Edomites, man, they're going to have to get it. They're going to have to be taken out the way, right? Con, con. And I want to go back to the second address real quick. Uh, 6 and uh, 44. It says, For immediately there was great and innumerable fruit and many divers pleasures. For the taste, and again, man, your taste buds are not going to be all messed up, you know, because you've been growing up on sugar. Like, uh, the first thing when you come out the womb, you got to start eating chocolate, man. Uh -huh. And that uh, automatically, when you're conditioned, you start eating a lot of sugar, you get used to it, you know. Uh -huh. And then your taste buds start to dole out. Uh -huh. And then you start to only want sugar. And once that, once that chocolate, which already has a damn pound of sugar, 
all right, processed sugar. Once you get used to that, then you start to want more. Okay. So now the foods have to become sweeter okay. and sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. Okay. And look, now you just effed your taste buds up. Why, yeah. why do you think everyone's depressed? Right. Everyone's mm -hmm. on a depression level because they got this, they, they're just hooked on damn mm -hmm. sugar. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it gets the depression of mine. Mm -hmm. They always gotta, they gotta be, they're always tired at work, sluggish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me get a five hour of energy. Right. Mm -hmm. That's just straight oh, sugar. Man. You know, they gotta let me get a Red Bull. Mm -hmm. oh, Take it man. down, you know, trash it, oh. get another one. It's like people nowadays look so, just so droopy, they're mm -hmm. depressed, and their spirit is gone because Esau gave you some damn bullshit to eat. Right. Right? He'll, he'll actually make it to the point to where you think that's a healthy diet. Right. They'll literally tell you, okay, if, uh, you know, certain sugars. It's healthy to have in your mm -hmm. diet, you know, candy. But what do you poison. need candy? Like, I don't know, man. Why do you need candy? Right. Why do you need licorice? Why do you, what is that? What does jelly beans and shit do that, for you? That's literally only sugar. It's straight sugar. Like, why? That's dumb, to be honest. People, it's like that. That's poison. Back in the days, like, you wouldn't be able to do that just because it was so mm -hmm. nasty. Mm -hmm. But now it's just like, you kind of need that dose. It's just mm -hmm. like cocaine mm -hmm. or like heroin or some kind of crack. Mm -hmm. You're always like itching, trying to, you know? They be itching like, I need something, I need something, you know? Mm -hmm. Especially when you become an addict and you just, you, you snort in all type of stuff because you can't stop. That's how it is with sugar. You might not know you're addicted to it, but you can't get off of sugar. I mean, it's just like, damn, bro. It's, yeah, that is true. But you can try to limit it. But at mm -hmm. this day, we're all effed up, man. He's all yeah. done effed up the people. Mm -hmm. Everyone's depressed. Everybody's everybody's uh, 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 socially, okay, uh, socially disorderly. Uh, yeah. They're like, so, you know, people mm -hmm. nowadays, everyone's on their phones. You mm -hmm. see, they don't really come out and talk hey. face to face. You got more, a lot of feminine people. More now than ever on their phones. Holy. Yeah, you know, it's just like, people, man. it's just like, this society is just like, fake. It's just like, Ugh, you know, mm -hmm. gloomy, dark. It's just like, hey, I don't want to be. And then when you come out the womb, they'll they'll inject you with all these vaccines. You get vaccinated, right? And it's just like, bro, why are you trying to? Why Esau? Like, what's up with you? All yeah. you want to do is destroy people. That's why you gotta be destroyed. Mm -hmm. He says that he says he's going to destroy those who destroy the earth, right? And our bodies come from the earth, and they destroy our bodies as well, man. So it's just like. Esau's going the hell out of here, man. Out, right. you know? Out. Right. He's not going to like the kingdom. No, you know. He goes on to say, and flowers of unchangeable color, which is very beautiful. You know, they're going to be, it tells you in Iraq that, they're, that they uh, have various colors, many a variety of colors. So when, you know, you try to get out the house and maybe go take a walk on a trail or something, you're trying to see something, you know? But really, you're not seeing too much, you know? Because the earth, it waxed old. Esau's done destroyed all the plants and take down the forest. And, you know, you just destroy the earth. So, I mean, what you see is what you see. You know, you're going to get a little bit of, of the, what do they call that? Uh, 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 I don't know. When you take a stroll and you try to get a good glimpse of, you know, nature. You try to do that, but you really can't do it on a, on a, on a wide scale like that. But in the kingdom, hey, say you want to take a stroll. You get to look at all the beautiful plants, man. You get to look at all the beautiful nature, man. You'll be able to actually enjoy it, man. Enjoy it. That's the that's that's word. Enjoy it. Gone. It goes on to say, and odors of wonderful smell, you know. Now you have your perfume, perfumes and, and colognes. You may think that's good or whatnot, but yeah. look, these smell, the smell in the kingdom is going to be on a whole nother level, you know. It's going to be coming naturally from plants, you know. Yeah. I believe... um. To, to make like the front of your house smell good, you would usually put plants on there. You know, you'd usually put flowers up there or maybe even in your house, you know. God, so but, the wind itself is going to, you're going to have to blow. Mm -hmm, it's going to mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. it smells like, something smells beautiful, man. Right, right. Uh, hey, hey, you know, beautiful smell, clean, clean air, God. you know, no more of this chemtrail. All right, and this was the third, yeah, and this was done the third day, con. So that hey, the, the kingdom is going to be literally heaven, man. Con. Right, man. So we're going to go back to Isaiah 11 and uh, sorry, 9. It says, They shall not hurt in all my, destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for the assign of his people. It to the Gentile shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. Right? And in that day it shall come to pass that the Lord shall set his hand again a second time 
to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria, from Egypt, from Paphros, from Cush, from Elam, from Shinar, from the Hamath, from the islands of the sea, and shall set up an assign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of the Judah from mm. the four corners of the earth. See, so Yahweh Shai is going to come to gather his elect, his uh, his redeemed, right? Out of all come. nations. Come. See, we're gonna the Lord is going to have to take us out from every nation, because our people are scattered to the four corners of this whole entire earth. We are scattered within every nation, right? That's why in the book of Revelation 7 and 9, it says, I saw a great, I just saw a great number, a multitude of men of every nation, kindred and tongue, right? That's only talking about the Lord's taking his, his people out of every tribe, out of every kindred, out of every nation, and they will speak in every tongue, mm -hmm. right? Because we're everywhere. We're in Japan. We're in Hawaii. We're in Germany, right? Mm -hmm. We're in the islands. Yeah. We're in uh, we're in France, the UK. We're in a, we're in Babylon, the Great America. So the Lord's gonna have to gather us all up out of these places where we be scattered, and then He's gonna actually, uh, uh you know, continually uh, uh deal with us. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, God. And I want to bring this out. I'm pretty sure we brought this out before, but I'm gonna bring it out again. This is Amos nine and nine. For lo, I will command and I will sift. The house of Israel among all the nations, uh -huh. like as corn is sifted in a sieve, God. yet shall not the least grain of corn fall upon the earth. And that that's one of my favorite prophecies right here because this this tells you, yes, Israel is scattered into all nations. All right, we become almost like the other heathen, therefore we were called the heathen's name. But understanding where the children of Israel would come back to our heritage, you know, and therefore. Coming back to the Most High, doing what He says, He's going to deliver us, you know. And especially what I like to go to is a sieve. What is a sieve? A sieve is um, it's something you you it's a it's a uh, something you use to separate. It's a filter. So the Lord, He's literally going to have a filter. All right, He's going to filter through the nation. All right, like like uh like a corn is sifting a sieve. Right, He's only taking up the corn. Right, nothing else. You know. Cool. So. He's going to filter Israel from, he's going to filter even Israel from Israel, you know? Mm -hmm. Those of them who are, who are like the heathen, they, they don't want to be reproved. They don't want to hear the word of the Lord. They're just like the heathen. You want to be a heathen, you, you be a heathen, all right? But for the Lord's children, you guys are, are going to be, it's a holy filter. Or if you're not holy, you're not getting filtered, all right? I want to bring this out. As Ezekiel 20 and 34, and I will bring you out. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered and with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with Piri for it out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people and there will I will plead with you face to face. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. So the Lord's going to bring us and gather us out of the midst of all nations. He's not gathering up the heathen. But he's only gonna like, like the brother said, he's gonna kind of sift like a net. He's gonna actually only, he's gonna only gonna bring up which is which, what is good, which is the elect of the nation Israel. That's it. Mm -hmm. You see? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want me to read this? Uh, yeah. This is Isaiah, eleven and thirteen. You want me to read on? Yeah. So we're gonna read on on that, right? The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not ex uh, uh, vex Ephraim. Con, that's just saying that there's going to be no more, uh... Strife. There's no, yeah, there's going to be no more strife or envy amongst the tribes. Contention. Yeah, Con. you're not going to have it to the point to where, okay, the northern kingdom envies the southern kingdom. Right. Meaning, the northern kingdom being the Hispanics and natives, they would envy the uh, southern kingdom, which is, uh, like, really the uh, darker-skinned tribes, you see? That's not going to... You're not going to have that hate, mm -hmm. man. Right? And we're not gonna vex them, so we're not gonna uh, we're not gonna get on their nerves, man. You see, mm -hmm. we're not gonna try, we're not gonna put them down because uh, if you understand, back in the time of the Jews, when Yahweh Shai was uh, when Yahweh Shai was in Israel, you only had Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, the Southern Kingdom. They were the only ones who were in Israel, but the Northern Kingdom they were cast away in 722 BC, and they became Gentiles after 722 BC. Because they be start they start living like heathen, you see. So 
whenever we would have the northern kingdom try to come into Israel, we would vex them, right? We tell them to get the hell out of here, you know? You're like, you're not a Jew. You're not an Israelite, you know? You're a, you're a heathen now, you know? Mm -hmm. That's why they call them Samaritans. They call them Gentiles. They call them heathens, right? So we're not gonna, we're not gonna vex them no more like that, man. You know, Come. Come. Every, you still got that a lot today. On, Negro only Israelites. Come. You trying to vex the other tribes? You trying to tell them, hey, those are not Israelites, man. Right. You always trying to say those Mexicans. That's not our people. <laughs> stop trying to stop talking to them. Mm -hmm. Stop acting like they are. They're us. They are. They are us, man. You just, you just, Judah is just vexing Ephraim, mm -hmm. and, and then Ephraim is envying us because, you know, they, 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 Ephraim knows that, okay, Judah for sure, or you know, these other native, these Hispanics and Native Americans, they for sure know that we are the Israelites, right? Mm -hmm. When you hear about Israelites, a lot of people think about black, and you know, but it's not about color. Yeah, it does you tell you too in, in Psalms that uh, the Lord is known through Judah. You God, know? Yeah, yeah. But Judah is that top tribe. Bro. Yeah, yeah. That's so we're going to tell you, they are the king tribe. Mm -hmm. That's why he said he's going to raise the test of Judah first. Yeah, tell That's why you see a lot of our people, the Negroes, up there mm -hmm. first. Because it says he's going to raise up the, the so called Negroes to uh, wake up first. Uh -huh. But the rest of the tribes will follow. Uh huh. And Salaki, even when going back to Genesis 49, uh, in that prophecy, uh, specifically the tribe of Judah, they would be the one who the brethren praise and look up to. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's even that. It literally, just, it literally told you that Judah shall be, he shall be the one who mm -hmm. thy brethren shall praise. Right. So, yeah. Because everybody wants to be, a, almost everybody mm -hmm. wants to be a Negro. Right. Everybody wants to copy our rap, our music, our style, right? They want to speak like us, walk like us, talk like us. Because Judah really is that top tribe, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It really is, Talks. to be honest. Yahweh mm -hmm. Shai himself comes from Judah. But in the day of the Lord, there's no, there's no longer going to be that separation of tribe. Everyone's right. just going to be cool. Mm. We're all gonna be like on the same level, to be honest. Right. You know, it's all according to the Lord, but you know, you can keep going. I got one, uh, one precept. This is Ezekiel thirty-seven fifteen. The word of the Lord came unto me again, unto me, again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions, and take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, for all the house of Israel, his companions. All right, so those are those are the two tribes, Judah being the southern kingdom and uh, the house of Joseph or Ephraim, Ephraim being the northern, uh -huh. and join them one to another into one stick, and they shall be come one thine, one in thine hand. So they are going to be uh, uh, put together. You know, uh -huh. they're going to be one again. It goes on to say, uh, uh, and when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt. Thou not show us what thou meanest by these. Say unto them that say the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be in mine hand. And the stick whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes. And say unto them that say the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel, from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land, and I will make them one nation in the land of the mountains of the Israel, mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all, and they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Mm. So that's a whole prophecy right there yep. to how the the uh, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, so called, are going to be all one nation and all one kingdom. You know, no no more Northern Kingdom. All right, starting with Jeroboam on down. No more, uh, uh, you know, the tribe of Judah only. Uh, it's all going to be together. You know, God. Judah is not going to vex Ephraim, and Ephraim's not going to envy Judah anymore. You God. know, they're going to be together. God. And when they're together, the Lord said that He's going to take each and every one of them. Out wherever they are dwelling in all over the earth, Come. they're going to be gathered up from among the heathen, among the heathen who are the other nations, and we're going to be taken up. Uh, you know, that's all got, prophecy. Yeah, you got 12,000 from each tribe, mm -hmm. 144,000. You got 12,000 uh, from every single tribe of Israel that's going to have the elect men in each and every one of the tribes. So, no tribe is going to be above one another. Mm -hmm. You see, we're all going to be like equals down there, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, you keep going at 14. So this is verse 14. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. The spoil shall, shall despoil them of the east together. They shall lay their hand upon Edom, and Moab and the children of Ammon shall obey them. Hey, that's it. The Lord, it just said, and that's how you know there's Gentiles, because people will tell you that, okay, uh, verses 10, 11, 12, and 13, that's talking about the Gentiles of uh, the other nations. Mm -hmm. No, verse, thir verse 14 is going to tell you about the Gentiles of the other nations. They're going to be, the Lord says he's going to lay his hands on them. <laughs> he's going to lay his hands on Edom and Moab, Ammon. And they're going to be our servants, mm. right? But the Gentiles up here were referring to uh, Israelite foreigners and uh, Israelites who were actually uh, scattered, right? But we can keep going. Uh, read none. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. Mm -hmm. And with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river and shall smite it in the seven streams and make men go over d uh, dry shot. And there shall be in a highway for the remnant of it, uh, his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. Come on. Come on. Come on. So that's what's coming up, man. So, you know, that's, that's Isaiah chapter 11, right? That's how, you know, breaking it down through the Spirit. Um, hopefully, you know, you were edified through the Spirit. You got anything you want to bring up? Mm-hmm. Right, uh, but till next time, uh, hopefully it's edifying. Till next time, shalom. Shalom.